happened. <clears throat> um, here we have small agenda about that and uh, about the author of presentation and, uh, and samples of big tech using uh, technology, which we describe here. Uh, introduction of server size rendering this is our second point, highlighting performance advantages compared to standard web application. Um, three um, point is static and dynamic rendering uh, four points composition pattern in terms of divided layout in server side rendering um, because SSR is uh, just acronym of that and five point is focusing uh, on um, on cell um, six point is short overview of data fetching and seven summary and sources. And it is worth to notice that um, I uh, focus on uh, I focus on um, this technology uh, not not by um, I, I focus for for this technology uh, because I write um, before article on our uh, software blog, which I also based on uh, in this um, in this uh, presentation uh, I sent to to you link uh, after after. Uh, presentation. <clears throat> okay, and a moment. <clears throat> okay, mm, about me, uh, uh, I uh, I am a software engineer, as uh, I, I don't say it, and uh, I uh, passionate about computer programming since I could remember. Uh, currently, I specialize in JavaScript with programming languages, focusing on the React ecosystem, especially. From time to time, for each programming lab project, I have also occasion to work with Node.js with TypeScript in the backend side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, continuous samples of uh, huge companies using Next.js. Okay. Um, in our modern world, um, many huge companies use server side renderings. Uh, even uh, Next.js itself in the documentation. Mm, have a list of the huge brands which uh, uh, which use uh, server side rendering uh, technology uh, built on the next chess um, because especially focusing on this performers uh, this performers layer and uh, com companies well known brands uh, which use next chess is for example Netflix uh, Spotify uh, Zapier Twitch uh, TikTok and many many more. And here I also recommend it uh, to, if you want to go into details, also to take a look on the Next.js official documentation, which I uh, sent to you by the end, the link of the documentation. Also, by the occasion of this presentation, I create also a Git code, a code repository, um, which, which I create in the public version uh, in my GitHub. And uh, I also, by the end of this presentation, I also showed to you the uh, uh, directory structure of uh, Next.js, uh, which is a little bit uh, uh, different than the um, regular React application or regular Node.js application. And this, uh, and because of that, it is, stress it is interesting. Okay, uh, we need to go next. And uh, here, um, and now let's uh, wade into waters of server side rendering. Uh, this feature was co concrete uh, to inject prevent the uh, HTML directly from the server to the client's browser. Um, this app is primarily uh, enhances uh, SEO as search engines lack visibility into the bundle until it uh, reaches uh, the client's browser. And uh, we, we stay a little bit uh, longer here. Um, uh, in Next.js, uh, um, in the uh, in the technology key, technology layer, um, provides feature called um, inject render HTML. What is it? Uh, this is um, this is a concept which allows us as a developer to render HTML um, in the server and inject the prepared render, prepared HTML structure directly to the browser. And this concept in the documentation, um, in the documentation calls server components. And this, uh, as 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 a name, um, this this com this this components um, is 
not have not have access to the browser APIs, which I say, uh, which I will say a little bit more uh, in the further in the um, slides of the presentation. But for now, I only want I only want to highlight that um, uh, server components, um, which is our default components in Next.js world, um, under the hood. Uh, use pre uh, render injected HTML, which uh, which we use uh, server uh, resources, and uh, thankful that uh, performers of uh, uh, client front end application um, is uh, high is is uh, definitely uh, improved. That is definitely improved uh, because we use sources of server to pre render HTML and inject this pre render HTML to the browser. And uh, I also admire uh, Next.js dots uh, the documentation uh, official website because uh, because it's very good, very well uh, um, written, and uh, and I recommend it to also um, take some time and review the documentation of Next.js technology um, and. Okay, uh, here, uh, as I planned, we have almost everything, but also, um, one moment, I need to, yes, uh, um, okay, one moment, okay. Um, okay, um, uh, what is the uh, important person created the Next.js? Um, uh, Lee Robinson, uh, this is person which is uh, vice president of developer experience at Vercel. And Verser is a company which is stand behind Next.js, and um, and uh, he said to uh, another company reason to adopt service rendering is performers, of course, which I mentioned. Lee Robinson, a key figure behind Verser technology on which Next.js is built, noted uh, in his blog that rewriting traditional backend based web ap application into modern full stack React. Next.js application leads to remove uh, over um, 20,000 lines of code and more than uh, 30 unnecessary dependencies. And this guy, Lee Robinson, uh, is a public guy, some kind of public guy, and he uh, have um, active, uh, he create actively a blog post, um, a blog website uh, with, with uh, his personal brands, uh, I guess. And uh, and this um, this information I take from his his blog, and I also recommended to go through this because guy uh, create with bare hands <laughs> called Next.js technology uh, uh, from the ground. That's why I have a huge knowledge uh, about uh, uh, how the Next.js works uh, essentially. Mm, yeah, and okay. And uh, now we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, um, we, we need to stay a little bit uh, longer here because um, what is high uh, hot model reloading? This is some concept um, which uh, um, which uh, Lee Robinson, uh, we, um, when, when he implemented this um, and rewriting backend application to Next.js full stack application, Reduce um, reduce uh, loading module from uh, one dot three seconds to uh, one hundred thirty one milliseconds, mm. which is which is uh, quite good accomplish and uh, and is actually amazing uh, from uh, in the huge scale and also this is the reason why uh, such huge brands. Uh, also go uh, and use this technology um, and uh, thankful that uh, code model reloading for example our netflix um, films uh, in uh, in bad network connection uh, have possibility to load uh, faster and this is uh, curiosity but it's worth to notice okay okay and we can may go next <clears throat> A static and dynamic rendering. This is uh, important. Okay, mm, it's essential to recognize that Next.js enables to create of hybrid application that leverage both rendering approaches. 
And this flexibility allows developer to optimize each part of the application for its specific requirements. Uh, for instance, a new uh, uh, website may use server uh, side rendering for its article to benefit from improved CSL and fast loading times. Similar, similarly, simultaneously, it can employ client side rendering for features like real time comments and notification to enhance uh, interactivity. Okay. And, um, and uh, mm, this is uh, this uh, the static and dynamic rendering is a little bit connected with this uh, up, mm, division of server component and client components, okay. And um, uh, but uh, but this is some uh, some technology which allows us as a developer to, for example, um, uh, implement a feature uh, like real time um, real time subscription or some kind of that. For example, from the business perspective, okay, when when we create a website portal and we want to have real um, time uh, comments, for example, user write down the comments and we want to immediately update information on the server um, we we need to subscribe uh, to the uh, stream event and uh, next days next day is, um, in the dynamic rendering allows us as a developer to use this approach and this is pretty much great i very recommend it um, of course uh, any website, not uh, any portal, any application, actually, any web application not uh, requires um, for us to use only static or dynamic rendering. That's why uh, with help uh, of that came to us hybrid approach, which calls also universal rendering. And this is uh, pretty much simple because um, this universal rendering simply combines the strength of both rendering methods to create a seamless user experience. And for example, layout general elements like main container or navigation, semantic, are ideal candidate for server components. And this is, uh, the, and I I show to you in the code also how uh, server components looks um, and actually. Server components uh, is uh, our default Next.js components, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's great uh, for a static element for for I don't know headers or navigation, which is which not requires for us to have access to API browser, etc. In opposite components, uh, which should have access to the browser API. Like for example, fetch method and uh, and cookies and etc. Uh, for this occasion, the best option is to use this client components. And usually, this type of components is marked with the string directive with clients at the top of the file. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, what I what I mean that uh, by default, Next.js um, use uh, server components. Mm, yeah, because uh, because uh, next day is outer uh, assam that uh, we uh, we have more some you know main components some navigation components than uh, than uh, components uh, which 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 we which needs to have access to the API browser. That's why, uh, that's why this approach that server components uh, by default uh, is handled by Next.js uh, without any directive. And when we want to use client components, we simply uh, should uh, write on the top of the file use clients uh, directive, and then we have uh, uh, we have client components, and we have access to the fetch, to the local state of React uh, components, and many many more. Of course, in the further further of the presentation, I also uh, prepare for you a list for a list of few um, compers composition of uh, the clients uh, components and server components. Okay, <clears throat> next slide. 
composition pattern is very important. And composition pattern uh, in terms of divided layout in server-side rendering. And um, in the next list, uh, we go with the good practice with this composition pattern over inheritancy. Um, and, um, the next is framework emphasis composition pattern over inheritancy, as I mentioned, in breaking down the approaches, uh, server components primary serve as a non-interactive parts of web application, while client components are designed for dynamic users. And what uh, what this mean? This means that when our components is uh, clickably for many, many time, uh, it's better to use uh, client components instead of server components. Of course, server components uh, from from that uh, also will be uh, work when overload of this component is low, uh, but uh, it's recommended too uh, in this special occasion when uh, components should be uh, should be capably uh, and available uh, instantly updates um, from the uh, for the client for the user uh, should be used client components and. Um, the composition pattern uh, is also uh, is also important uh, because is also important because um, in this composition pattern um, we may uh, divide ours uh, um, we may divide uh, ours uh, ours huge um, um, web application uh, to um, to the part which is not interactive and interactive. And uh, here we have conceptual illustration of the composition used by the two types of components as I present in the documentation. Exactly, exactly. You find exactly the same. You find exactly the same, um, the, the, the same the, the information in the documentation uh, with this uh, beautiful uh, diagram when uh, when we can when we should uh, use server components and when we uh, when we not uh, when we should use client components and uh, curiosity and interesting thing is that uh, um, when we uh, render components in the server we have more directly access to the database and we can uh, for example, invoke call uh, call da database inside uh, this uh, server uh, inside the server rendered components, uh, which is pretty much great. Mm, I very recommend it, mm, and because uh, thankful that we can uh, avoid to use uh, regular fetch a browser API, um, and instead of that, uh, call directly database. Uh, in the server components, which which is preferred, uh, and and render in the server right. I show you uh, either by the end uh, of this presentation also in the code. Mm. Oh, okay, uh, access backend resources, and this is exactly what I mentioned. Access backend resources directly. Yeah, and uh, th this is very not intuitive, but uh, thankful next JS server side rendering is possible to uh, have uh, access to the bug and resources um, directly, okay? Also a very nice feature uh, to not expose any API keys, any access tokens, any uh, valuable information or keys um, to the outside world uh, because uh, everything is keep it in the server, yeah? Everything is kept in the server components, and uh, server components uh, in the server only render, uh, um, pre render HTML uh, and prepare to inject it to the browser and do not expose this access token API keys, etc. And this is also great from security perspective, yeah, because we have a lot of vulnerability uh, in uh, web. When, when we keep it uh, key or access tokens uh, uh, in the browser. And actually, this is bad practice. And uh, to help with that, uh, Next.js came to the built-in mechanism of uh, keep it uh, these tokens and APIs on the server. Also, server components 
clients have access to the um, to the method of Node.js uh, and uh, programming language and format. And this is also great. And uh, I um, I show you. And also this uh, this is also worth to notice that uh, because of this um, this uh, um, marks because of this marks uh, because of this um, because of this characteristic of server components, client components, Lee Robinson, who uh, rewrite standalone backend application uh, from uh, from the standalone um, from the regular, um, um, for example, Java language, uh, I guess, uh, he uh, reduces um, dependencies and also uh, may remove unnecessary code, yeah, because uh, because um, Next.js provides for us to better um, divide our business logic. And because of this division of our business logic, we can reuse our uh, um, server components in many places. Um, and, uh, and of course, this is a little bit uh, uh, when some of you hear about this, and uh, you can think that this is a little bit um, similar to the monorepo concept, and uh, of course, this is uh, this is good uh, in, in initiative. This is good uh, intuitive, because uh, uh, Next.js uh, in in folder structure uh, is similar uh, to the monorepo concept also, because we can keep in one repository our Next.js backend and our Next.js frontend. And that's why Next.js calls also full stack framework. But for now, uh, from the React ecosystem perspective, from the React documentation perspective, this is the most recommended framework uh, because of this performance advantage, which I mentioned. Mm. OK, mm. let's go uh, next. <clears throat> OK. And uh, what is what is important that um, this is of course not uh, not my invention to um, to uh, create this uh, presentation. Uh, it's important uh, for me to uh, um, pass from for you uh, my sources, which is uh, what I mentioned at um, Lee Robinson official blog website, which I uh, which from I take this uh, performance issue. Also, I recommended to go uh, go to the soft self uh, blog uh, article, uh, which is uh, created by me uh, on the hours hours official uh, blog post website, and of course the most important is our official documentation. Uh, which uh, which have many more examples of uh, uh, division between server components and client components and also have a lot of uh, uh, real life examples mm. and uh, and is very good in Britain. And uh, by the occasion of this presentation, uh, as I mentioned, I create a git co uh, code repository, which I also showed to you, okay? Okay, and so um, I uh, I will have plan to focus for uh, for that to show you how uh, directory structure uh, looks in the next JS project. Okay, and so, um, uh, uh, keywords in the directory structure is API, and for uh, for next JS uh, directory structure API means that uh, contains um, this this API directory, this API module contains uh, pretty much uh, our backend, yeah? uh, our backend endpoints. And for example, uh, we have uh, controller, okay? And uh, for for the occasion of the uh, hours, uh, uh, hours uh, presentation, hours uh, meetup conference actually, uh, I create uh, some authentication uh, mechanism which use uh, uh, we use uh, Google uh, Google out uh, uh, Google out uh, to um, uh, provider uh, provider and um, and what is 
also important to mention that uh, many nice um, many nice feature uh, came to me with the next out uh, library which I used to our authentication and uh, but but for the uh, reason of the presentation is um, worth to notice that um, API directory which is ours um, which which is ours endpoint structure is very similar to the uh, Nest.js convention. And this is actually pretty much great because uh, thankful that uh, thankful that we have um, a dependency injection pattern uh, implemented under the hood, which is great. And uh, we have also a uh, very nice and very good uh, the, the vision for server and controllers, which is comfortable division. Okay, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, requires API um, structure. And what is also important? Um, um, important is uh, that uh, our API, um, uh, our API uh, directory, our API module is not uh, mandatory require uh, required when you create Next.js. What I mean? I mean that if you want to create only frontend using Next.js to um, use this uh, pre-render, um, to use this inject HTML, um, uh, to use this inject HTML server components and client components, uh, you may uh, you, you may not implement it uh, Next.js backend. And this is also very common. The, um, this is also very common to not focus on the API and have for a uh, security perspective uh, in the outside of this repo uh, our backend, yes. And uh, here in Next.js, focus on only for the frontend. And this is al also common, as I've said. Okay, and um, uh, about uh, directory structure, what is also important to mention that uh, this is uh, uh, the, um, this is uh, also a convention that uh, basis for the domain and um, one create prompt for example um, is uh, also uh, um, ours root of ours uh, is roots of ours frontend um, what i mean i mean that when you create directory inside the app and this name not will be uh, api uh, then Next.js understand that this is um, our root, okay? And um, and also also uh, some keywords is page. And when when we create uh, inside the uh, particular um, particular roots uh, uh, component called page, then uh, Next.js know that this this page should render when user go to the uh, slash profile and when when a user goes to slash create prompt uh, next.js know that should render page and rendering was handled uh, in this way in next.js this is actually comfortable also in my opinion and what uh, what else uh, next keywords is layout layout uh, is um uh, is uh, initial structure which is um, which is uh, render uh, which is uh, render uh, before page okay and inject to this page and uh, and this is also uh, this is also very um, this is also very comfortable because uh, most mostly a layout uh, is um, server components because contain navigation, co contain main components, some parts of the React application which is uh, the same for huge uh, for few um, for, for few pages. And when we create layout uh, in the root directory, as here. Then next day is known that this is our root layout, and uh, this means that uh, this layout will be rendered for each page. Uh, yeah, 
And that's why we not need to redefine uh, this navigation, um, this navigation stuff, this main stuff, which which we um, definitely uh, implemented before. Yes, uh, because Next.js known that should render this road layout because uh, because this is uh, this is Next.js convention. Yeah, and uh, also error handling is pretty much great because. Uh, keywords uh, responsibly uh, for error handling is error, and um, and uh, um, also uh, the, our errors boundaries uh, is implemented uh, by the occasion of this error, and uh, what what else also is available from the um, application structure to create. Um, library components outside the app. What I mean, when we need to create um, um, shareably, when we need to create shareably uh, components, we can create components directory outside the app. And uh, thank for that, we can implement it. Uh, thank for that, we can uh, implement it shareably components, which we which we can uh, import uh, directly to the um, to the particular page. Of course, I can show you uh, by the occasion of this uh, of this um, presentation how this application looks like. One moment, and for now is uh, actually not do anything special um, because uh, I not provide. Uh, and environment variably needed for uh, open API because here for example I use open API to to may um, to may uh, fetch the uh, prompts and uh, but but actually uh, I create some time ago this uh, this code repository and uh, I create this code repository for running learning for Purpose, uh, purpose for some time ago, uh, but uh, but I need, I want to use this code repository to show to you um, how um, application structure is handled in the next JS and that and uh, uh, and uh, and why is very comfortable and. Uh, and also, uh, also last uh, one thing is that um, we, we have handled uh, this uh, imports uh, mod import model um, in in Next.js under the hood. And uh, as I remember, even create create React application have a recommendation to use as a boilerplate uh, Next.js boilerplate because uh, it's very good uh, uh, configure and uh, provides for us uh, additional feature as the server components. Okay, and um, and I, I, I don't remember that I said this, that, that's why I maybe say it again, that uh, for example, um, this, this is what I, uh, this is uh, what I mentioned on the presentation, that for example, when we not have this use client directive, Mm, th then Next.js known that this whole component is rendered on the server. This whole input, this because any of these elements not need to have access to a browser API. And uh, thankful that uh, form component to uh, is rendered in the server and is not um, yeah, and is not um, and and is not. Uh, uh, take it resources of the browser, okay. And in the opposite, when we have uh, this um, this requirements to have access to the, for example, uh, use session or uh, some um, some custom hook, yes. Then we need use client. Uh, we need to uh, mark directive use client. And thankful, uh, mark, uh, thankful directive use client. Next.js known that this particular component should have should have access uh, to the browser, 
uh, should have access to the browser and not sh and should not be rendered in the server. Uh, and um, and when when you uh, during the development when you um, um, when you programming yeah uh, uh, is very good uh, acceptation uh, is very good error handling uh, which show to you uh, when uh, your component is server component and should be not be server component. Uh, but should be uh, client components. And this is also advantage of Next.js. Uh, thanks a lot for attention. This is everything what I have prepared for the presentation. I hope so that um, I highlight uh, the advantage of use this amazing uh, Next.js framework. And do you have any question? Um, do you have uh, any question? This is a good time for ask. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.